To all the pastors, seminarians, and congregation members who are joining for the testimony on the revelation of the Old and the New Testaments by chapter, Shincheonji Online Seminar, welcome. I am Instructor Kim Bong Jin from Shincheonji Church of Jesus, your presider for today. First of all, I give thanks and glory to God for allowing us this time to understand the will and and purpose of God contained inside of the 66 books of the Bible. Also, to get to meet everyone here in attendance for the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter, Shincheonji Online Seminar, I am truly so joyful. In this seminar, we will testify of God's work and order recorded throughout the Bible based on the five W's and 1H. I hope that it will be a valuable time where we will be able to fully perceive the mystery and the meaning of heaven hidden in each chapter of the Old and New Testament through these words testified to today. First, let us pray to our Father God with a united heart. Thank you, Father God, for your grace and love for allowing this Shincheonji online seminar. Through this seminar, the word of truth and your grace are granted to the souls who hunger and thirst for righteousness all over the world. Please help us to fully perceive the secrets of heaven and your will and purpose that are hidden in the Old and New Testaments. Through the word of revelation that is te testified to, may all the people in the family of faith come to know this era. May we be united in you and in your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Today, we will receive the testimony of the Word, titled Lesson Number 5, The Result of Keeping or Breaking the Covenant. In every era, God made a covenant with His chosen people. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, we see the consequences of those who keep the covenant with God and those who do not. Through this time, I sincerely hope that we will perceive what the covenant we must keep today is and be sure to keep that covenant and receive the promised blessings. Then now we will welcome instructor Park Char Kyu from Thaddeus Tribe, Andong Church, who will testify to the Word today. Pastors, theology students, and church members worldwide who hope in heaven and eternal life, it is nice to meet you. My name is Park Chul Gyu. I am the head of Andong Church of Thaddeus Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. I sincerely thank you for attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. The words that we'll be sharing today is Intermediate Lesson Number 5, titled The Result of Keeping or Breaking the Covenant. Main reference, Deuteronomy chapter 28 but we will also refer to Jeremiah chapter 31, Hebrews chapter 8, and Revelation chapter 7. Out of the pastors who are listening to these words, there may be some of you who know this, and some who do not know this. However, please listen to the explanation that I'll be giving you today. Listen well, and let's make it a time when we can find the answers to God's will. In order to understand the result of those who keep the covenant and the result of those who don't, 
we must first understand the different types of covenant found in the Bible. The Bible is composed of Old Testament and New Testament. Old Testament is Old Covenant. New Testament is a New Covenant. All believers who believe in God and the Holy Scripture must know about the covenant that is in the Bible, right? Especially, what is the covenant that believers must keep today? It is the New Covenant Revelation. Then in order to keep this promise, we must know the content of the promise, right? The Bible clearly records the result, meaning what happens when someone keeps the covenant or do not. Through this time, let's find out our relationship with the result of the covenant today in great detail. Let me introduce our main reference chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy was recorded approximately 3,500 years ago from today, and the recorder is Moses. Moses who recorded these words is a fourth generation descendant of Jacob, the son of Amram from the tribe of Levi. Once again, the title for today's words is the result of those who keep the covenant and those who don't. Deuteronomy chapter 28 is a chapter that explains about the covenant made with the chosen people in God and the results of the covenant. In every generation, God chose a pastor and set aside the people belonging to this pastor as the chosen people and made a covenant with them. Deuteronomy chapter 28 first writes about the result of those who keep the covenant. They receive blessings. They win wars, and ta they take possession of all blessings. In contrast, those who do not keep the covenant are cursed. They're defeated in wars, fought against their enemy, and they lose all things. Therefore, in order to receive God's blessings, we must absolutely keep our covenant made with God, right? Now let's find out about the content of the covenant made with God and the chosen people through our main reference verse, Deuteronomy chapter 28, one by one. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 14, writes about the blessings that one receives by keeping the covenant. Verses 15 to 68, it writes about the curses that one receives for breaking the covenant. First, let's look into the result of those who keep the covenant. In verse 1 to 3, it says, If they obey God's words and carefully follow all His commands, meaning if they keep the covenant, then they will be set high above all the nations on the earth, and if they obey God's words, then all blessings will come upon them, and they will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. And in verse 7, even when the enemies rise up against you, the chosen people, it says, the enemies will be defeated before you, and they will come at you, the chosen people, in one direction, but they will flee from you in seven. In other words, the result of keeping the covenant is that they receive all of the promised blessings and the enemies will be defeated in war and the chosen people will be victorious and the enemies will flee in seven directions. In contrast, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to 68, it explains the result of those who do not keep the covenant. Let me first explain verse 15 and 16. It says, if, do, if they do not obey God's words and they do not carefully follow all His commands and decrees, meaning if they do not keep the covenant, then in the city and in the country, they will be cursed. Isn't that right? Not only so, in verse 25, 
It says, you, the chosen people, will be defeated by the enemies. And even if you go at them from one direction, you will flee from your enemies in seven. And you will become a thing of horror to all the kingdoms of the, of the earth. Then to organize, the result of those who do not keep the covenant is that they receive all curses and plagues. Even if they are the chosen people, they will be defeated in wars. And instead, they will be the ones who flee in seven directions. Like this, Deuteronomy chapter 28 shows the result of those who keep the covenant and those who don't. Then, believers who know these words must absolutely keep the covenant, isn't it so? But the question is, the, the chosen people who made a covenant with God in the Bible, did they keep the covenant well? Let's find out in the Bible the covenant between God and the chosen people and their results. At the time of the Old Testament, there are those who made the first covenant with God, which is physical Israel. There are those who were enslaved in Egypt for 400 years, and God brought them out through Moses, brought out from Egypt, and God chose them. And like, just like it says that God makes a covenant with the chosen one, on Mount Sinai, He called Moses and made a covenant with physical Israel. In order to understand the content, let's see what it says in Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 to 6. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you'll be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. The content of the covenant that God made with physical Israel, the chosen people, is that if they obey God and they keep the covenant, then they will become a kingdom and priest. This was the promise that was made through Moses. And in verse 8, we can see how the people of Israel responded that they will do everything the Lord has said. And God, so that the people do not forget the laws that they must keep, he, God Himself recorded on the tablets of stone these laws. And that is the Ten Commandments that we can find in Exodus chapter 20. And the first commandment is to worship no other God. However, still, in 1 Kings chapter 11, the king of Israel, Solomon, worshipped Gentile gods. This is why it is recorded in Hosea chapter 6, verse 7, that they have broken the covenant like Adam. What was the result of physical Israel breaking the covenant? Out of the 12 tribes of physical Israel, one tribe was left, but the other 11 tribes were destroyed by Gentiles. And this one remaining tribe, Judah and Jerusalem, in Isaiah chapter 1, they ultimately were swallowed up by Gentiles and they were destroyed. Through this, we can see that even though they were God's chosen people, because they did not keep the covenant, this was their end result. Therefore, God's chosen people must make sure to remember their covenant with God and absolutely keep it. Because of all these things, let's see what God did next. Looking at Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22, God promised to create a new thing through the prophet Jeremiah. Creation of a new thing is referring to something that did not exist before. It is talking about the creation of God's new kingdom and new people. And this is also seen in Revelation chapter 21 as the creation of new heaven and new earth, meaning creation of Shincheonji. 
God promised two things for the work of the creation of a new thing. First, in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27, He promised to sow two kinds of seeds. Another, in verse 31, He promised to establish a new covenant. To better understand this, let's read what it says in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Through prophet Jeremiah was promised the two kinds of seeds and a new covenant, and this prophecy was spread throughout Israel for approximately 600 years, and at the first coming it fulfilled. At the first coming in Matthew chapter 13, as promised, the two kinds of seeds were sown, and it was promised to harvest. At the time of harvest, those who are born of good seed, meaning the sons of the kingdom, are harvested and brought to the barn. However, the weeds, meaning the sons of the devil, are not harvested. It says they remain in the field and are burned with fire. Then who are those that are harvested and those who are not harvested at this time? Those who are harvested are those who have kept the new covenant and they go to heaven. Those who are not harvested are those who did not keep the new covenant, so they go to hell. Therefore, we must know God's covenant. Those who know God's covenant and keep it will be harvested at the time of harvest. And it's in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31, even the promise of making a new covenant was fulfilled at the time of first coming. The reason why a new covenant was established, we can see in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7 to 8, that the first covenant that was made through Moses went wrong, that a new covenant was made. This new covenant is the promise that we must believe and keep at the time of the fulfillment of the New Testament. Then who established this new covenant and how? In Luke chapter 22, verse 14 to 20, at the time of first coming, Jesus made a new covenant on the Passover night. This covenant was established in Jesus' blood. And the content of the new covenant that in God's kingdom, the Passover meal, Jesus' flesh and blood will be eaten. Then eating Jesus' flesh and blood is not referring to physical flesh and blood, right? No, in John chapter 6, verse 51 to 58, Jesus says that I am the living bread that came down from heaven, and those who eat my flesh and blood will have eternal life. Then Jesus' flesh and blood, which we can eat and have eternal life, is referring to Jesus' words of life. Therefore, eating flesh and blood of Jesus means to listen to Jesus' words and to perceive them. The summary, the summary of the new covenant is found in Revelation. Revelation records the new covenant in great detail. Therefore, perceiving Revelation and keeping it is what it means to Keep the new covenant. It says in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 to 12, of what we must do in order to keep the new covenant. Then let's read Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 to 12 in one voice. This is the covenant I'll make with the house of Israel after the time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, 
from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Like the words that we read, putting God's law in our minds and our hearts is what it means to keep the new covenant. God's law is talking about new covenant revelation which we must keep. And putting this revelation engraving in my heart is what it means to be sealed and to keep the new covenant. This is why in Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 to 19, it says, Those who add to or subtract from Revelation will receive plagues and not be able to enter heaven. Meaning, those who add to or subtract from Revelation are those who do not keep the new covenant. They are the reality of those who are kicked out. In other words, those who do not add to or subtract from Revelation or those who have kept the new covenant. However, today, those who believe in Jesus, the people of spiritual Israel, have they kept the new covenant and no revelation? Looking at Luke chapter 18, verse 8, it says, When Jesus returns at the second coming, will he find faith on the, on the earth? Meaning, it is only a few of those who believe in Jesus' words of promise and keep it. Just like the first coming, today at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, New Covenant, there are those who keep the New Covenant and those who do not. Looking at Matthew chapter 8, verse 11 to 12, it says the subjects of the kingdom are kicked outside into the darkness, and those who come from the east and the west take their places in heaven. Those who are kicked out here are those who did not keep the new covenant. And those who come from the east and the west and take their places in heaven are those who keep the new covenant. Then, what is their physical reality? First, those who do not keep the covenant are talking about the churches of tradition in Revelation chapter 6. In Revelation chapter 6, the chosen people who are figuratively referred to as the sun, moon, and stars, it says they lose their light and they fall to the earth. Meaning, like Adam, they break their covenant and betray. In Revelation chapter 13, the tabernacle of heaven that represents the churches of tradition of Revelation chapter 6, they go to war against the group of the dragon, the beast with seven heads and ten horns. And in this first war, the chosen people of the tabernacle of heaven are defeated by the beast and they are destroyed. What is the reason why they are defeated in this war? It is because, like Adam, they broke the covenant and they betrayed. As a result, like the words that are recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 25, they flee, they are defeated by the enemies, and they flee in seven directions. However, unlike them, at the time of the second coming, there are those who do keep the covenant. They are those in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11, come from the east and the west and take their places in heaven. In Revelation chapter 7, there are those who are harvested and sealed. God's new kingdom and new people, the 12 tribes. Let's see how this kingdom was created by reading Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 to 11. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. In Revelation chapter 12, the child born of a woman clothed with the sun and his brothers 
go to war against the group of the dragon, the beast with seven is ten horns. And this is the second war that we see in Revelation. In this war, those who belong to God, meaning the child born of this woman and his brothers, fight the group of the dragon and overcome. And the weapon that they use to fight and overcome is the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Those who overcame in Revelation chapter 12, through them opens the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in Revelation chapter 15, and they're used as bowls of wrath that pour out in Revelation chapter 16 upon the betrayers and the destroyers, meaning Babylon, and judge them. At this time, Babylon is judged by the promised shepherd, the one who overcomes. And according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 7, they flee in seven directions and get destroyed. But those who are harvested and sealed and made into God's new kingdom and new people, the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel, they're created. The 12 tribes is God's kingdom that has been created by overcoming. Then what was the reason that they were able to overcome? It is because they have the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony. This is what they fought and overcame with. The evidence that they have overcome is that they are able to create God's kingdom, the 12 tribes. At the time of the Old Testament, it was Jacob who overcame and created the 12 tribes of physical Israel. At the first coming, it was Jesus who overcame and he created the 12 tribes of spiritual Israel. Today, at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, with the woman born of the with the child born of a woman in Revelation chapter 12, he overcomes and creates the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel. That's why this kingdom is Shinchanji Church of Jesus, the 12 tribes. Shinchanji 12 tribes are the reality of those who keep the new covenant. Let's verify this through the Bible. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 to 10. At the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, those who are purchased with Jesus' blood and given to God as kingdom and priest, there are those who reign as kings on this earth. And they, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 to 6, says that they are free from sin by Jesus' blood. And they also, in Revelation chapter 7, are those who are harvested and sealed, the 12 tribes, the 144,000. In Revelation chapter 14, it says they are the first fruits that have been harvested. The reason why they are able to become God's kingdom and priest is because they have kept the new covenant. And after sealing of the 144,000, in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 and verse 14, it says, Out of a great tribulation will come out a multitude in white that cannot be counted. They have washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. So they are a people who receive atonement of sin by Jesus' blood. Also, they are written in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11 to 12, as those who come and harvest it are from the east and the west and take their places in the kingdom of heaven. In Revelation chapter 21, it says that they are new kingdom and new people, meaning new heaven and new earth. New heaven, new earth is God's kingdom that has kept the new covenant, Shincheonji. In Revelation chapter 7, the 12 tribes, the 144,000, and the multitude in white. To organize, the new covenant was to eat Jesus' flesh and blood. Then, Revelation chapter 7, the 144,000 and the great multitude in white are the reality of those who have eaten Jesus' flesh and blood, the reality of those who have kept the new covenant. 
pastors and believers were listening to these words. What must we do to obtain our hope and the purpose of our faith, which is to go to heaven and eternal life? Mustn't we keep God's law, new covenant revelation, engraved in our minds and our hearts and keep the new covenant? Pastors, all of you must listen to these words first and make it known to your church members so that everyone can keep the new covenant and receive the promised blessings. Then what is the blessing that those who keep the new covenant receive? It says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 is that blessed are those who keep the new covenant revelation. Looking at Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10 to 12, keeping the new covenant is to put God's law engraved in our hearts and become sealed. Their sins are remembered no more, meaning they receive atonement of sin. And those who receive atonement of sin go to the place where Jesus prepared, which is in Revelation chapter 21, the holy city, New Jerusalem. So they dwell there. This holy city, heaven, is seen in Matthew chapter 25, given to sheep like believers as an inheritance. There are those who keep the new covenant. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 4, it says, The holy city, New Jerusalem, God and heaven, come down to new heaven, new earth. This new heaven, new earth is God's new kingdom, Shincheonji. At the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, those who keep the new covenant are able to enter into this holy city. Looking at Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, it says, God will wipe tear from their eyes. There is no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. Then to organize all of this, the blessing that those who keep the new covenant receive is atonement of sin, become the twelve tribes, priests, and people, and receive heaven and eternal life. Then pastors and believers were listening to these words. Have you kept the new covenant? Have you been sealed with the words of the new covenant revelation? Have you added to or subtracted from revelation? We must know, have I been created according to the Bible? If we truly believe in the promises of the Bible, the new covenant, then we must find the place that has been created according to the promise of the new covenant. The people of Shincheonji of the Twelve Tribes have been sealed with the words of Revelation, created like stamping a stamp. They do not add to or subtract from Revelation, but instead master it. Shincheonji has kept the New Covenant. God and Jesus dwell at a place where the New Covenant fulfills. Please find God's kingdom, the Twelve Tribes that has been created according to the promise, and enter into that kingdom as God's family. Let's summarize what we went over today. The title of today's lesson was the result of keeping or breaking the covenant. In every generation, God's chosen people broke their covenant with God. That's why they were cursed and destroyed and they scattered. Today, those who keep the new covenant receive blessings and enter heaven. However, those who do not keep the covenant are cursed. They are unable to enter heaven. Instead, they go to hell. This new covenant is talking about revelation. Keeping the new covenant means to put God's law, the new covenant revelation, engraving it in one's hearts. Today, 
The reality of those who have kept the new covenant is spirit, new spiritual Israel, the 12 tribes, the 144,000, and the multitude in white, meaning the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. Shincheonji that has kept the new covenant, according to the new covenant revelation, harvest and seal, and created the 12 tribes, became the 12 branches of the tree of life, and feeding the food of eternal life, which is the fruit of the tree of life, and healing all nations with the leaves of the tree of life. This is the evidence that Shincheonji has overcome. Just like the words that we heard today, at the time of the second coming, when the new covenant is kept, those who keep the words of the revelation become God's kingdom and priests and a holy nation and receive this great blessing. Therefore, believers who truly believe in God must know what the new covenant is which God has given us. Do not be like Adam who break the covenant, but keep the new covenant, overcome, and receive heaven and eternal life as an inheritance as a people of heaven. family of faith of this global village, I hope that all of us can perceive the words of testimony that is given today. Find God's kingdom where heaven and God are and become one. Shincheonji is, a, is pl the place where God and Jesus are eternally with. I hope that we can all enter into this eternal nation. Next time, we're going to look at intermediate lesson number six of the promised shepherd of the Old and New Testament. A lecturer who is more humorous than I will come. So please, listen to the words that are given to us today multiple times. Engrave it in your hearts so that you can make God's treasure your own. And all the people who are listening to these words, I pray that we will perceive God's will and enter heaven and obtain eternal life. Lastly, in God and in Jesus and in the Word, we are one. So let's all shout this out together. We are one in God and in Jesus. We are one. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and we are truly grateful that at this time, pastors and theology students and church members all over the world could come to Shincheonji Online Seminar, The Words of Truth, and to receive this precious testimony, we give you thanks and glory. God, we are looking at the testimony on Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter, especially on Deuteronomy chapter 28, the result of those who keep the covenant and those who don't. May all the listeners of these words be able to keep the new covenant, put it into action, so that we can enter into the holy city, New Jerusalem, and belong to the new spiritual Israel, the 12 tribes, new heaven, new earth, and receive salvation. God, please fill us with the love of truth and protect us in our health, in our bodies, and our spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to the end. The promised shepherd is the shepherd that God promised in the Bible beforehand. That is, the shepherd promised inside of the Bible. Then what the promised shepherd's work is and how we can recognize him. At this time, we will look at these things one by one through the scriptures. It says that God sends his promised messenger for the churches to testify about all these things, the entire events of Revelation. So shouldn't it be necessary for the messenger of Jesus to come and testify to the book of Revelation? We must learn the book of Revelation from the promised shepherd of the New Testament and become a true believer who correctly knows God's will, believes, 
and receive salvation. Yes, as you saw in the video, the seminar will be held next time on the topic of the promised shepherd of the Old and New Testaments. The time is the same as today at 10 a.m. So I hope that everyone can attend. We will all be able to enter heaven as so we desire. Testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter Shincheonji Online Seminar is being broadcasted simultaneously in 24 languages around the world through the official YouTube channel of the Shincheonji Church of Jesus. We are hearing a, a lot of good news from all over the world and denominations hoping to become one with Shincheonji. Besides the words we heard today, if you have any more questions or inquiries about Shincheonji Church of Jesus and its doctrine, please contact the representative number of each tribe shown on the screen. We will look to provide kind and detailed guidance. We will now conclude the Shincheonji Online Seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Amen. To everyone who joined us, thank you.